if you enjoy getting behind schedule and running your projects over budget, be sure not to watch this video. Now, this video is to help you avoid failing with your medical device projects. Hello, my name is Peter Sibelius and I am the founder of MedicalDeviceHQ.com and you're watching a video that's part of my online course on project management for medical devices. The link for the course is in the video description. This video is to help you improve your chances of succeeding with your project. So do us both a favor and take a second to subscribe and hit that notifications button. That way you'll never miss new content. Let's get started. There are so many starting points to a video about project risk management and so many things to be said. It's like coming to a smorgasbord of, of tools that you can use to avoid being stressed to death by a project that is not going the way it should. We will anyhow start with the process of project risk management that you should repeat over and over again in your project. The first thing to do is to identify the risks. That would be to say, what could go wrong? Having identified what could go wrong, you should analyze and evaluate the risk to figure out what the impact of the risk might be and which ones to prioritize. Then figure out a response to the risk. That is, what can you do to reduce it? And then implement the response. And all of this is usually documented in tables similar to what's seen in this example. Obviously, there would be a lot more rows than just two, as in this example. And then you need to monitor and follow up on the risks you have identified, but also to see if you have new risks that have been forgotten before or that have occurred as a result of things you've learned along the way. And you would be doing all this with the purpose of decreasing the impact of negative risk to optimize the chance of project success. When working with this process of identifying risks, you might start with your project documents or just the inherent knowledge that you have of the project and what is to come. You could then go over your documents and use information gathering techniques to identify the risks. And when it comes to your responses, you would apply strategies for negative risks or threats. To be honest, these tools and techniques are a bit academic if you ask me. I would say that most of the time you would be doing this with brainstorming sessions or that someone just sits down and goes through the list and works on it. But by all means, these tools can most certainly be used. And the output will be the risk register or risk list. And the next time you apply the process, it will be updates to the same. And when you implement risk responses, those should be documented in your project document. So you would also have project document updates. Just to make it tangible, if you, for example, decide that an appropriate risk response to is to source components from a second supplier, the task of sourcing those additional components would be put in your schedule as a task with someone's name on it. This is how your risk response impact your project documents. The outcome of your project risk management work is appropriate to put in a table format, looking roughly like this example. You might find that this is quite similar to product risk management according to ISO 14901. And that is true, but keep in mind they have different purposes and they should not be mixed up. I will now tie together the process that we looked at before with the fields in the risk register. This will just be a brief overview and then we'll come, uh, come back to it and go over the steps in greater detail and depth and also bring up some of the most common mistakes. And there are plenty in this area. Here you can see the process of project risk management together with a risk register. The output from identifying risks would go into the risk description. The analysis and evaluation of risks would be the impact, the probability, severity, urgency, and priority. The urgency might require some explanation, and it, is basically, uh, it basically answers how close in time the risk is. Because let's say that you have a one-week delay of a component next week versus a one-week delay of a component in 10 months from now. The urgency of the near-time risk is much higher than what might happen in the future. So we write that how close it is in time to help us in the prioritization of risk. 
the risk response or strategy that we have chosen to manage risk goes in here. And then the implementation is about assigning someone who will make sure the risk response is implemented. And lastly, you should evaluate the risk at the end and monitor and follow up on it. Now I will show you some very common mistakes in relation to the parts of the risk management process or the project risk register that we were just looking at. The risk description might be the simplest part because it simply answers the question, what could go wrong? And that could be anything from the supplier being late to a particular technical thing not working out like you intended it to. And as long as you can document these things, you will be fine. Of course, it might be difficult to identify all risks and it's not uncommon that you have omitted the things that will actually happen, but just do your best and with enough time spent on this, you will get really far. There is, however, one thing that you should be mindful of. What if you, for example, identify the risk that sales will not be what you expect it to be? Is that a project risk? Well, unless you have sales as one of the deliverables in the project, it's not. And most projects would not have that part in the deliverables, but rather stop at delivering a product or a design. Is this not a risk then? Well, it is a risk, but it's a corporate risk, not a project risk. So remember that project risk management is about things that have an impact on the project objectives. That is, if the scope or result of the project is impacted, the schedule or the cost. If the risks are relating to things that could go wrong elsewhere in the company and the company's objectives, it's a corporate risk. But formally speaking, it should not be part of your project risk management. So what would you do if you come up with such risks? Well, if someone is responsible for corporate risk management, I would refer these risks to that person or department to allow them to manage those risks. Want to learn more? Head over to medicalvicehq.com and register for my online courses on design control and project management for product development of medical devices. This is an absolutely unique course bundle. This video is part one on this topic, so make sure to subscribe and come back for part two. Do you have any questions? Let me know in the comments. I love talking to you and seeing you here. Thanks for watching. I'm Peter Sibelius, the founder of medicaldevicehq.com. I hope to see you again soon.